Yo, what's up guys, it's Jeff, and today we have the first developer and public beta of iOS 14.5. So it looks like that unless we have any major bug fixes that we won't be seeing iOS 14.4.1, but of course, we'll keep you updated if we do in fact see that release. Now back to iOS 14.5, and obviously with every major update like this, we expect to see something new going on, some new stuff going on within iOS. So let's go ahead and get this developer beta installed onto our personal device here and take a look at the finer details and what's new. Okay, so getting into the finer details of the uh, iOS 14.5 beta one update. And the first thing that you'll notice is that we do have some more information about this update. The update size was just around like 4.5 gigabytes for this update going from iOS 14.4, the official version over to the first beta here. Um, so quite actually a hefty update. And with this update, we do have a new build number. It's 18E. 5140J. And if we take a look at the um, modem firmware down here, we actually do have new modem firmware, and that will make sense in just a few minutes when we go over new features. But that is 1.57.02. That was quite a major uh, modem firmware update. Now let's get into some of the new features that we have here within this update. And the first thing is just in the settings app here with software update, this actually looks totally different. Now to me, this looks just a little bit cheesy, but we do have a different look as to to uh, what's going on with the update page here. So it says your phone is up to date with all the latest bug fixes and security enhancements last checked today, 1135. And then obviously that check mark in the middle that looks very different from what we've seen in the past with uh, previous versions of iOS uh, 14. Now, one thing that I've always had a problem with specific to AirPods Pro Max headphones is when I connect my headphones, not every time do they connect. That was actually fixed within the iOS 14.4 update. So that is now fixed if just in case you guys wanted to know, the experience has been just a little bit choppy with these new headphones specific to iOS 14. But one other issue that I was having was that um, the icon would show up differently than what the AirPods Max headphones are. So now I it actually does show up um, correctly. So when I go into uh, this menu here, you can see that the icon is correct. But as I said before, previously it was not doing that. It was showing like regular AirPods and um, not everything was um, basically adding up to what uh, hardware I was actually using. Now, one thing I did want to point out that hasn't been fixed is that uh, when the headphones are off and you try to switch to noise cancellation mode, like full noise cancellation, at the bottom here, it'll say um, that your um, each of the AirPods needs to go into your ears to activate noise cancellation. I guess technically that is correct for these headphones, but it seems like maybe the tech should be something a little bit different, like maybe you should just put your headphones on or your headphones need to be on for noise cancellation to be activated. But uh, this text kind of um, ensues that we're still using like two traditional type um, AirPods headphones where there's two different headphones that need to go into each ear um, separately. So just something I noticed, um, I think that may not necessarily be a bug, but just an oversight, but hopefully um, that is fixed in the near future just so that directions are a little bit more clear as to how to use the he these headphones specifically with iOS uh, devices. Now, another new thing is Apple Fitness Plus uh, workouts can now be casted via AirPlay 2. So for anyone that has Apple uh, Fitness Plus subscriptions and actually want to view that that content on another screen, like maybe a bigger screen, like um, maybe a TV that doesn't, doesn't necessarily have like an Apple TV connected to it, you can actually AirPlay that over to that TV uh, using Apple AirPlay 2. So that is actually something that a lot of people um, were looking forward to, to be able to cast that. So it looks like things are improving there and you can actually use that feature with other devices as in AirPlay devices where you can screen or um, cast that information over. Now, one huge major new feature is actually um, specific to the Apple Watch in tandem with iOS 14.5. So um, for the first better half of like iOS 13 and iOS 14, uh, we were able to um, essentially use our mask while using our device. Um, Face ID would just immediately shut off and we'd have to enter our passcodes because it recognized that we have a mask on. 
now you can actually use your Apple Watch to unlock your device, just like you would on any Mac device. So what happens is if your phone notices that you have a mask on, you actually can use your Apple Watch if it's close to you to unlock your device. It will just automatically unlock if that device is close to your phone. So if you have, uh, if you're a regular wearer of your Apple Watch and you have a mask on, you can actually use that to activate or to unlock your device. Now you do have to have that Apple Watch on the watchOS 7.4 update, the beta one update for it to work with iOS 14.5 beta one. So just in case you wanted to test out that specific feature, go ahead and make that update as well. Now, something else that I wanted to point out is uh, specific to um, the the modem firmware that I showed you before. So obviously there was a huge jump in modem firmware that we saw in the about screen here. And typically we don't see major jumps like that unless we see something pretty major going on in the background. And what's actually happened is um, when you go to activate a separate SIM, like an electronic SIM, we have a uh, physical SIM card on the side of the device where you can actually stick your SIM in, but you also have an electronic SIM for um, very specific devices. So that electronic SIM is now uh, able to access 5G. So there's actually dual SIM 5G capabilities worldwide on the iPhone uh, 12 Pro Max now and any devices that support it. So 5G, again, dual SIM 5G support, that is pretty huge for a lot of users out there who like to have um, two SIMs within their phone, one being physical and one being an electronic SIM. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about performance when it comes to iOS 14.5. With this new version specifically of iOS, I have to say that things are just slightly faster than what we saw in iOS 14.4, both via results on benchmarks and also using it in an actual use case scenario. Now, what I noticed was that the processing of photos is actually a lot faster than what we were seeing before, especially with portrait photos specifically. There's also faster app loading speeds, especially the camera app, and there's also a more smooth Face ID authentication experience, at least in my own personal experience using my iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now, one thing that I will say is Face ID as a whole has gotten better in the past couple of releases of iOS versions, especially on my iPhone 12 Pro Max, which was already fast on day one. But it looks like Face ID, the experience as a whole is obviously getting a lot more smooth. It's faster and just easier to unlock your device and also to use it as an authentication method for payments or anything like that. So it is getting faster and it's actually nice to see that Apple is still focused on such a small but really relevant feature within iOS. Now, besides those very small changes that I noticed, I can't really see anything else going on within iOS 14.5, but as the beta goes on, we'll of course definitely keep you updated on if performance continues to improve or maybe if there's a downfall in performance as we continue out through the betas. Now, moving on to battery life, and things seem to be very similar to what we saw in iOS 14.4 and 14.3. No real major changes here to see, and honestly, as an iPhone 12 Pro Max owner, I have nothing but good things to say about battery life, especially on this device. Now, even older devices I have, like an iPhone 8 Plus or maybe even an iPhone 10, still has really good battery life, and I think that's actually very important for those users specifically. It's nice to see that development has continued to the point where battery life just doesn't fall off on older devices like it had in the past and I think that's really important because you can obviously use your device a little bit longer and it looks like continuous updates here is actually not really improving battery life on older devices but just maintaining it which I feel is good enough for older devices like an iPhone 10 or maybe an iPhone 8 plus but um, if we notice any changes in the next couple of betas here before the official release we'll definitely let you know. Okay, so after talking about all of the new features, performance, and battery life, I guess that leads us to the big question, should I install this onto my personal device? Now, my answer for beta one versions is always a hard no, just because they tend to be a little bit more unstable and unreliable, but of course the choice is ultimately yours on if you want to install. What I will say though, is I think that the fact that a public beta is also released along with a developer beta means that we're dealing with a lot more stable of a build here, but I'd still proceed with caution if you don't want any issues on your phone when it comes to testing out beta software. Now, if you were like me and you want to see what's new and experience new versions of iOS as soon as possible, then go right ahead, install the public beta. The public beta, as I said, was released today along with the developer beta, and you can access that by going to beta.apple.com. Now for channel members, that developer beta profile that you can download has been updated just in case you need an updated beta profile. Now, 
Guys, that was it. That was today's iOS 14.5 update video. And just in case you didn't hear before, there's also a release of iPadOS, tvOS, and watchOS betas as well. Pay attention to that watchOS beta if you want to uh, basically access that new feature for Face ID. So with that said, if you're in any of those betas or want to get onto those betas, go ahead, check them out. They're out today. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you want to see more content in the near future, definitely get subscribed, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell button to get notifications when any new content is released. You can also check me out on Twitter at Jeff Updated, and we also have the updated podcast to check out as well. Links to both will be in the video description down below. Also, one more thing, shirts. We now have some merch up for sale on the Cotton Bureau, so if you want to get a good quality shirt with an awesome design, we have some for sale on that platform, and a link to that will be down in the video description down below. But anyways, guys, I hope to see you in some future content or on some social media platforms sometime soon. But until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.